Uh, my name is Mark Marin. I'm a civil rights attorney here in Sacramento, and I'm uh, representing the Shergill family. And we're having this press conference today because we have just filed a federal civil rights action against the city of Lodi, its police chief, Mark Helms, two officers, Scott Webb and Adam Loki, and, uh, uh, and other unnamed persons who we may eventually identify lawsuit. The lawsuit arises out of the killing on January 25th of this year of Parminder Singh Shergill, who was a 43-year-old uh, Gulf War veteran uh, who suffered, as many veterans do after combat service, post-traumatic stress and other mental illness, including depression. And uh, that morning, uh, his uh, family uh, felt he needed to get some treatment at the Veterans Affairs Clinic, and as they had in the past, uh, they called the police to see if they would transport uh, Parminder uh, for treatment. Uh, he was a peaceful, uh, loving man, gentle, kind, never violent, and when they showed up at the house that morning, the officers told the family because Parminder was not at the house at the time, that they couldn't do anything, that he was not violent, he had not threatened injury to himself or others, and therefore they couldn't do anything, but if they saw him, they would try to talk to him. Well, they did in fact see him. Uh, he was at the park just two blocks away, uh, where he customarily went and he would walk in the morning. He was an inveterate walker, uh, and uh, they accosted him, two officers, he didn't want to speak with them, he just kept walking slowly, walked by them, started walking toward home, and when he uh, was within several houses of his own home, uh, his, uh, he turned around, officers had been calling and yelling at him, turn around, we want to talk to you, stop, we want to talk to you, he turned around, he lifted a hand, and in, uh, in front of witnesses who were looking out of the window, right down onto the driveway where this uh, took place, two officers opened fire and discharged at least 14 bullets because the, the empty shell casings were found on, his, on the sidewalk. Uh, Parmender fell down uh, in the gutter. Uh, the officers uh, approached him, uh, flipped him over, handcuffed him as he was bleeding to death then realized that they couldn't even see what injuries he had because his clothes uh, were handcuffed onto him. They unhandcuffed him, they cut off his clothes, and they distributed uh, belongings around the sidewalk. Uh, those belongings included a wallet, included a, a pocket knife, uh, and included other, other right, matters which we have not no lawyer here. recovered. Uh, well, you are welcome to come on in here, Denny. Can you repeat uh, that last part, Mark, which they distributed his belongings? They just strewed the belongings uh, that they found in his pockets on the sidewalk. Now, we know that, uh, that according to the witnesses who uh, watched him be uh, shot as he turned around from a distance of approximately 15 feet or more, we know that there was nothing in his hands uh, when he was accosted by the police that he did not move toward the police, that he did not threaten them, and there was nothing on the ground when he fell. So there was no knife in his hand. And the reason I mention this is that the officers, uh, that actually the city police, immediately put out a statement after this killing that uh, uh, alleged that Parminder had charged at the officers with a knife and that they had no alternative but to kill him. Well, in fact, that's contradicted by the eyewitnesses. We don't know what the officers have actually said because no statements have been released by the city police, by the district attorney's office, by the coroner, by anyone. In fact, one of the reasons that we're filing this lawsuit is because we have been unable to get any information from the people who now know, that is, the city police and those in, uh, persons who have investigated this case. So the only way we can get information is to file a lawsuit and proceed using the processes that are available uh, to federal court litigants. There's only, there's only one person who refused to give us a complete statement, and she gave 
the investigator the impression that the reason she was not giving a full statement was that she had been cautioned by the police not to talk to persons. So we uh, have been trying to get the coroner's report. We haven't gotten the autopsy. We haven't gotten anything. And when I met uh, with the uh, city police uh, chief, uh, Chief uh, Helms, just a couple of days ago with the members of the family who are here behind me, uh, I asked him if he had any information other than what I had. And he, of course, wouldn't tell me anything, uh, so he didn't acknowledge that. I said, do you have any information on the basis of which you could say that you thought this was a justified killing? His response to that was interesting. His response was, the officers did what they were trained to do. I responded that if that's the way they're trained, then there's a big problem with the training. That is the problem. He said, well, we're not here to discuss the training. We are, the, the further we get into this case, the more adamant we are that this is an unjustified killing. The man was known to be uh, mentally ill and non-violent. When the officers responded to the house, they knew that. They should have used whatever sensitivity uh, they should be trained to exercise in dealing with someone who's mentally ill. And to put him in fear, possibly, uh, so that they eventually actually shot him, killed him. It's totally unjustified and out outrageous. And we are going to get to the bottom of this through our federal procedure.